Mmm, we're ready to go. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Crypto Mining Show, your one-stop shop for all cryptocurrency news from the perspective of a cryptocurrency miner. Today, we have a pretty interesting show. We are seeing basically some price discounts on staked Ethereum, and some think that this reflects doubt on a smooth Ethereum merge. We're going to be talking about the DeFi platform, Akala Stablecoin, falling 99% after hackers issue 1.3 billion worth uh, dollars of to or 1.3 billion worth of tokens. And then we have some more minor news. Basically, Bitcoin miner Green Ridge generation shares fall, as well as Bitcoin miner Prime Block cancels listing plans. So as far as miners go, still kind of in that struggling phase, especially if they're mining Bitcoin. Now, I'll get into more of that a little bit later, but obviously the margins on Bitcoin are very, very tight. And that's probably coming to, of course, GPUs here soon, at least one would think. ASRock is the first to bring Intel's ARC A380 graphics card to the US. You can purchase it now on Newegg, but some scalpers found an opportunity on the low supply of it, unfortunately, and have already taken the price from $139 on new egg to 245 dollars so unfortunately you know if this is indicative of what's to come for supply on the gpu side of things for new lines of gpus we might be sitting on some old stock of course right now with the 3000 series and the 6000 series from nvidia and amd respectively but you know it doesn't look like you're, it doesn't look like the supply, at least for Intel, is good. I don't know if that translates over, of course, to AMD and NVIDIA. I, th and I think they have better manufacturing uh, ready to go. Now, Hive on Pool is going to be talking about adding Ergo. And we have EVM compatibility with Conflux coming, as well as more updates on Caspa moving to Rust and a new release from BZ Miner. We'll get into all of that and more right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options, including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services, including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. And welcome back, everybody. I'm going to shill some bits be tripping over here, drinking out of his coffee mug that he sent me for free because I'm a YouTuber. Ah, the perks of being a YouTuber. But, you know, go check his channel out. He does some of the best mining content around. All right. I do wish I was left-handed. So that's a note for people that are making coffee mugs, by the way. If you want a streamer to have it, you know, shown, make sure you print it or check if they're right-handed, but either print it on both sides, right? Or if you're only going to do one side, do the side that shows out to the camera when you're using your right hand. That's just some marketing thing. I'm thinking of some, some marketing strategy there, you know. All right, so... Let's get into the first one. We have a new release from BZ Miner version 10.0.3. Further improvements to ETH and Ethereum Classic plus Caspa hash rate for NVIDIA GPUs. Improvements to dual auto-tune. They added max dual auto-tune drop option to control how much ETH hash rate you're willing to lose when auto-tuning. And I think we covered this already yesterday. Or maybe it's just because they did another hotfix. I think they did another hotfix right after the show yesterday, it looks like. 
Let's see what's changed here. Updated download log in GUI to download the log file. Increased GUI console update frequency and fixed OpenCL enumerating device OO. You can disable OpenCL. Use for, useful for rigs where BZ minor crashes due to AMD drivers. And they added the ZIL only option. And that just says do not mine ETH. Uh, part of the ETH plus ZIL, which is interesting. And they added the log file verbose uh, verbose option to log differently or different verbosity to log file versus console. And then the next one we have basically, if you guys aren't familiar with Caspa, Caspa has been around for a little bit. It's one that I spec mined for a while. Uh, it's been doing very well in price. It has also gotten some basically some notoriety through the interview I did with Daniel Keller to where they are looking into it for uh, adding into Zellcore. And this gets obviously more interesting because one of the things we reported on a while ago was their move from Go language to Rust. Now Go is the, obviously the, I, for lack of a better term, I don't want to call it simple, but the more simple Google programming language which is what it's currently programmed in and now they're moving to rust and you can start participating they have it up on their github now so if you want to participate and help in this project or if you just want to go see the code for yourself and see what's going on you can head on over to their github at github.com slash forward slash caspa net and the rusty caspa so this is Caspa on Rust. It's a work in progress to implement the Caspa full node and related libraries in the Rust programming language. So you can come over here and install the Rust toolchain, and they have the full guide here for you to go ahead and get it done. So supporting the network and the development of these projects, especially when they're early on, not only is good for the project, but it's good for you on a learning side, on the learning side of things. And in a bear market, I think it's extremely important to up your education level. So if CASP is something you're interested in, Go up your education level on what they're doing with this move to Rust. I think that that is pretty much where I leave it. That's what I'm trying to do through this bear market is just improve my education level. Now, we have a new proposal on Conflux, and this will be their Conflux Improvement Proposal 104. And this is to create a new EVM compatible space with Ethereum state at specific block number. So the simple summary is that they're going to create a new EVM compatible space with Ethereum state at a specific block number as the Genesis state, the block just before the Ethereum merge takes effect. This can be treated as an Ethereum proof of work hard fork chain. Interesting. Ethereum merge is coming to pro and proof of work will be abandoned soon. This will largely affect the business environment of Ethereum miners. Currently, there are some efforts and communities being initiated to hard fork Ethereum with proof of work. However, the existing Ethereum technology stack is not advanced and the Ethereum Foundation and tech team will definitely not support the further development of those hard fork chains. They're clearly referring to ETHW right now from Chandler Go and Justin Sun, who we've talked about yesterday. So you can check out yesterday's stream if you want more detail on ETHW. And we talked about it a little bit last week as well. They say, our observation is that the fundamental of a fork is the replication of the ledger state rather than the consensus mechanism. So we uh, innovatively propose a concept of state fork for Ethereum. Creating an Ethereum fork chain on Conflux has the following advantages. So this is really, really interesting. Conflux is, number one, Conflux's virtual space mechanism allows creating a new EVM compatible blockchain with Conflux's consensus technology support. Number two, Conflux's consensus is based on more advanced tree graph technology that significantly outperforms Ethereum without sacrificing decentralization. Number three is Conflux sticks to proof of work mining and tends to be friendly to Ethereum miners. And you can see CIP 102, they say. And then four, Conflux Foundation will continue to develop Conflux technology with new innovations. 
So what they're doing here is not necessarily forking Ethereum, right? But they're going to, there will be a state fork for Ethereum and that will create an Ethereum fork chain on Conflux. This is a really interesting move from Conflux moving up to the merge. This one has, in my opinion, a lot more merit than just a straight uh, fork of Ethereum. And it allows for that potential on Conflux to have people essentially move over uh, from the EVM standpoint, point of view, and be able to work within Conflux and within their ecosystem a lot more easily. This is something to keep an eye on, guys, and definitely want to see what their timeline's gonna be and so on, as well as if this passes and whatnot. So definitely check this out. This is pretty exciting stuff. It's really interesting, like I said. I still prefer like the ground up idea than maybe a fork, but this is a little bit different, right? So it's not like they are necessarily just straight up forking Ethereum. They're just taking the state of Ethereum. So a state fork of Ethereum and putting it over here. So it's like, it's like almost like a backup. I don't know. It's really interesting. I need to do some more studying on it, obviously, but definitely check it out if you get a chance. Now, Hivon is adding Ergo, so a quick announcement from them. They said, I don't know what your followers will say, but our devs will soon be hard at work on some new pool options. Hashtag Ergo at Ergo platform. Stay tuned. Now, obviously, HiveOS and HiveOn pools, they have essentially right now Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. A lot of mining pools essentially have Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, right? You have Ethermine, for example, that's just Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. I think they've added Ravencoin and some other stuff, but Hivon only has those two and they're going to need to have additional revenue options for their pooling options and something that integrates that miners are basically willing to use on their platform. And so obviously adding an ergo pool is good and more support on the network and more nodes in general is good. So I definitely support it. Uh, what will be interesting is if other larger pools start to add it as well. Obviously we already have some large pools like two miners doing it. Ethermine would be interesting. Of course, Ethermine seems to be going down the path of staking, right? They've launched or are going to launch an ETH 2.0 staking pool. And that's kind of their path as far as mining pools go. Uh, some other ones would be, you know, what's Flex Pool going to do? What's some of these other larger ones going to do? It definitely looks like Ant Pool is going to stick with Ethereum Classic due to their large investment into, of course, Ethereum Classic with Bitmain. So there's all of that kind of in the works right now. And it's really, really interesting to see all of this start to kind of snowball into a bunch of change for miners. It feels a little late though. Like a lot of this support that, that these coins are getting feels very, very late. Like I would have expected Hivon to start deploying, you know, mining pools for other coins you know, way earlier in the year, but there was kind of this hesitation from miners where it was almost like this reluctance to accept that the change uh, was coming for proof of work to proof of stake on Ethereum. And I think that's just what we're seeing now. What this is ending up in though, of course, is just more support for other networks. And these networks are pumping compared to you know, your, the rest of your market. Like if you go check out anything on coin market cap right now, the 24 hour price changes are all pretty much down on Ethereum and Bitcoin. But once we start getting into these smaller proof of work coins like Ergo, for example, we're seeing pumps over the first, over the last 24 hours and so on. Um, well down right now, but you know, and essentially for the past day, a pretty decent pump. And so over the day, we're starting to see some of these coins just go ahead and pump up, which is really interesting to me that we're seeing the proof of work coins pump up. Uh, Caspa is up about 60%, which is absolute insanity. We tweeted that earlier. And we're not seeing Ethereum stay above 1900, which I was expecting Ethereum to crack 2000 running up to the merge. It more than likely still will. It's just something to keep an eye out on. 
Now, ASRock has its first US ARC A380 and it's coming um, here. Well, it's actually released and it's supposed to be $139. But unfortunately, if you go check it out on Newegg right now, it's around $245. Like we said, scalpers are already taking advantage of it. ASRock has become the first manufacturer to officially bring the A3 graphics card to the US market for a great entry level price of $139. But like I said, if you go to the website, they even have a, a screenshot here. It's on back order already. And then the listing, if you search for it, it basically has those third party sellers on Newegg trying to sell them for like $245. Under no circumstances do I think this is worth $245. Lots of other miners have already tried to get it mining. Uh, I definitely want to take a stab at it personally, but you know, for the most part, your red panda minings and so on, they have reported that they can't really get it to mine anything. So that's more than likely a driver issue more than anything else, especially as it pertains to OpenCL. Now, depending on the architecture of these Intel GPUs and their driver support and all of that, it may not be something that even is worth taking a look at at all. Um, like we've seen, of course, with things like similar technologies in the Steam Deck, they won't do the OpenCL portion. They don't have the driver for it. This could be similar to kind of what is going on with the architecture on Intel as well, um, just because it's not a traditional design and it's very new, right? So is it worth it from a VRAM capacity? Possibly, because you are getting basically six gigabytes of, of VRAM for $139. I don't think there's anything else that's really comparable to that. So there is that, right? Your six gigabytes versus the four gigabytes, but you do still just have a 92-bit bus and it's just GDDR6. Pretty low clock speeds on the GDDR6 as well. So even if this gets, you know, basically support for miners to actually function. How well will it perform? I don't know. Now, of course, I could always be behind, but I did do a search beforehand just to see if there is anybody that's gotten it cracked as far as mining, and I haven't seen it yet. Bitcoin mining news. Bitcoin miner Prime Block cancels listing plans and terminates a $1.25 billion merger with 10x Capital. The two firms terminated their agreement, which would have allowed Prime Blockchain to go public by mutual consent on August 12th. Bitcoin mining company Prime Block, Prime Blockchain, ended its plans to go public via a merger with blank check company 10x Capital Venture Acquisition. The two firms terminated their agreement by mutual consent on August 12th, according to a Securities and Exchange Commission filing. Plans for the listing were confirmed in April with expectations that the merger would be completed in the second half of 2022, carrying an enterprise value of 1.25 billion US dollars. No official reason has been given for the decision. However, uncertain conditions that have set in across both the crypto and mainstream markets in recent months could have been a factor. SPAC deal, SPAC deals uh, have been a prevalent means for crypto companies to access public stock markets in recent years, but their attraction has cooled following the downturn in digital asset markets in recent months. In July, trading platform eToro's planned public listing via a $10.4 billion merger with FinTech Acquisition Corp. 5 was terminated with FinTech chairman Betsy Cohen saying it has become impracticable. So, what are we seeing? Well, obviously we're seeing more capital get pulled out of mining at the end of the day, which is definitely something to pay attention to and it more than likely has to come down to a couple different factors. One is the shortage of space to actually install Bitcoin miners where we are having hosting issues everywhere. And then in addition to that, the really super low margins on Bitcoin mining. Essentially, at this time, if you look at Bitcoin mining in general, it does feel like unless you are an actual a power company yourself, it's hard to be competitive. Things like Iris Energy in Texas, where they can both go ahead and provide power to their own rigs, as well as sell power to the rest of the grid for Texas, seems to be the way to go. And the capital investment for something like that is extremely high. 
And that means for us hobbyist miners that taking a look at things like ASICs can be extremely daunting, especially if you're looking at ASICs that are ever evolving and basically coming evolving through the bear market, right? You have Intel and Samsung coming into ASIC markets specifically for Bitcoin. And then of course, just the amount of old machines that are going to get dumped onto the market that will be incompatible or not incompatible, but make a lot less. So your margins are a lot lower. Seems very difficult to get into Bitcoin mining in general. There are some other options as well, though. You know, if you can have a good old boy relationship with somebody that uh, has some sway around natural gas, that could be one way to look at it, too. Bitcoin miner Greenridge generation shares fall as revenues miss estimates. So even more kind of bad news on the Bitcoin mining front. The company said the combination of falling Bitcoin prices and high global energy prices presented a challenging earnings environment. Bitcoin miner Green Ridge Generation Holdings, GRI, reported second quarter revenue of $31.3 million, falling short of analyst estimates of $34 million, according to FactSet. The company also reported a gap net loss of $107.9 million in the quarter, including $98.2 million in special items. Shares were down about 9.5% to $4.21 in after hours trading Monday after rising almost 12% during the day. Shares are down 71% year to date. Greenridge produced approximately 621 Bitcoin during the second quarter of 2022, compared to 315 Bitcoin in the second quarter of 2021, and had approximately 27,500 miners with approximately 2.5 exahash a second of combined capacity as of June 30th, 2022. CEO Jeff Kurt said in a press release that the roughly 60% decline in the price of Bitcoin in the second quarter combined with the spike in global energy prices, presented a challenging earnings environment. And I mean, that even hits, obviously, the home miners as well. The thing is, is we can bob and weave a little bit more, and you have the option to mine a lot more stuff, especially if you have GPUs and you're at a lower level. There are things to get around this. Once again, this comes down to the problem of Bitcoin margins being extremely low right now and the amount of competition in the market. The sudden change in mining economics has driven us to refocus our strategy to prudently prioritize liquidity and capital preservation over aggressive growth while maintaining our relentless fo focus on operational performance, Kurt said. According to Kurt, Greenridge now plans to pause development of new mining sites and instead plans to concentrate on its two existing sites in South Carolina and New York. Green Ridge expects to have at least 3.6 exahash a second of mining capacity by the first quarter of 2023 and to maintain that level until it determines the market conditions are attractive for additional growth. I think this is a little backwards though. Like we've talked about before, and they probably don't have a good cash position, but getting into a good cash position during a bull run and then being able to actually implement your growth plans during a bear market gives you the most profit potential. Now, obviously, exactly timing a bull run and a bear run can be a little bit difficult, but it's easier than ever in the Bitcoin space thanks to the cyclical nature of the halving cycles. So, you know, I think like if you are, if a lot of these companies are new to, of course, Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin in general, and they kind of missed the boat on getting a good cash position before a bear market, but it's still difficult no matter what due to the margins, right? The thing is, there's a whole bunch of them. What we'll see is probably some more M&A, some more acquisitions, that sort of stuff. And we'll start to see less and less mining companies that are operating but we'll probably stick around the same hash rate or the same amount of total hash rate because these companies will essentially sell their mining rigs to other companies and sell their companies obviously off, but the hash rate will remain the same. We'll just start to see a consolidation, unfortunately, and it'll probably, like I said, consolidate under energy companies or companies that have direct access to the grid in some form or fashion. And that poses an interesting problem to centralization with Bitcoin, at least in my humble opinion, because at the end of the day, we have a centralization problem within the, you know, 
power basically within the electricity companies and so on already. Um, in a lot of places, you know, you basically have some sort of monopoly over the power grid by a single entity. And then if they're able to basically generate even more revenue and drive those margins even lower with Bitcoin mining, it's kind of a centralization issue at the end of the day. And it's something that I worry about for sure. Once again, from the whole mining perspective, I think that it's, you know, my personal perspective, if I'm looking at this, you know, I had thought about moving into Bitcoin mining because of the Ethereum merge and so on, but I don't actually think personally, this is a good way to go. Not financial advice for y'all. Of course, this is just what I'm looking at, at least once again, as it always pans out with GPU mining, I have a little bit more sway as far as like lenience between what I can mine and how much I mine with, etc. Now, if we moved on over to other ASIC options, I have said, of course, like the L7 makes sense because on script mining, what you have is a bunch of different coins that are available, which is a little bit closer to the GPU mining scene. But in addition to that, we've never really seen a bear market development of a script miner, meaning the L7 will probably last into at least a portion of the next bull run. And there won't be another development of another script miner until into the next bull run. That's typically how it worked last time, which is why you saw for a while L3 pluses that you could buy during the bear market for like 175 bucks shoot way up to being worth like 1500 bucks and making 80 bucks a day at one point, which was absolute insanity. So let's talk about DeFi platforms, the big hack of the week or of the day. DeFi platform Akala's stablecoin falls 99% after hackers issue 1.3 billion tokens. A bug in the protocol's newly developed IBTC USD liquidity pool left the door wide open for hackers to exploit. So yet again, another not only DeFi hack problem, but another stablecoin problem, right? And this is not good for, you know, the entire market because it's just really bad face uh, for crypto. But Polkadot-based decentralized finance platform Akala's native stablecoin, AUSD, depagged on Sunday, plummeting 99% after hackers exploited a bug in a newly deployed liquidity pool to mint 1.28 billion tokens. Akala developers uh, said that the bug was caused by a misconfiguration of the IBTC AUSD liquidity pool shortly after it went live on Sunday. A liquidity pool is a digital pile of cryptocurrency locked into a smart contract, which results in creating liquidity for faster transactions on decentralized exchanges and DeFi protocols. After noticing the exploit, the team disabled the transfer functionality of the erroneously minted AUSD remaining on the parachain. Parachains refer to custom project-specific blockchains that are integrated with the Polkadot and Kusam, uh, Kusama networks and can be customized for any number of use cases. Now, I have a WTF is a Polkadot video if you guys need to go check out and understand what parachains are. But essentially, as far as parachains, they're unlimited versions of uh, sharding, which it was supposed to be, you know, it not supposed to be, is the answer to scalability for a proof of stake Ethereum competitor. Um, unfortunately, right, we aren't seeing the same scalability from uh, Ethereum. However, obviously there's some issues here. A wallet believed to belong to the attacker still contains approximately 1.27 billion AUSD. They have asked the white hat hackers to return the stolen funds to Polkadot or Moonbeam or Moonbeam addresses. On-chain sleuths have pointed out that the attacker who minted 1.28 billion AUSD was not the only person to take advantage of the bug. Several other users allegedly stole thousands of dollars worth of DOT from the liquidity pool. The Twitter account Alice and Bob estimated uh, the, that the damage was $0 to $10 million, likely around $1.6 million US dollars with a chance of recovery. Launched earlier this year, AUSD successfully held its soft peg to the U.S. dollar until the hack. After the attack, the price of AUSD plunged from roughly $1.03 per token to $0.009 per token. 
The developers said Sunday night that would continue to they would continue to trace the on-chain activity to resolve the error mint uh, mint of AUSD and try to restore the AUSD peg. Later on Monday, the community members create a proposal that would result in the return of all erroneously minted AUSD to the protocol and tokens later being burnt. The Akala did not return requests for comments at press times, probably because they're working on this. But we have yet another, you know, stablecoin problem. We have yet another proof of stake network problem. We have yet another DeFi problem. All of these things clearly like compound into negative press surrounding cryptocurrency. And then it does always bring up the question of are stablecoins something that we really move into? Clearly, they've had their utility here recently with the collapse of certain economies in places like Argentina. And I think that they have provided a way out uh, for people that are suffering from basically extreme inflation issues. And that's great, but it's all pegged to the US dollar, which means basically the reserve currency is still the US dollar. Crypto is just a way to get around regulation, at least at this time, at least for people that don't have a ton of money and just get around regulation by going through an international bank. At least that was the case that we saw previously. So cryptocurrency does end up being a hedge against inflation, but when does it get to the point to where it's actually Bitcoin that becomes the stable coin for lack of a better term, and you move out of all of these DeFi protocols? It's kind of the question that I have. Once again, you need to slow, take these things slowly because if you try to push them too quickly and you have bugs in your system, millions of dollars are lost. And these developers need to be extremely careful. It seems to happen time and time again, and we aren't learning our lesson within crypto. Price discount on STETH reflects some doubt in a smooth Ethereum merge, though. The current price of the derivative token implies a close to 94% chance of the merge succeeding without major hiccups or delays, according to Enigma Securities. Now, this is kind of weird because what they're saying is that because staked ETH or STETH, which is the wrapped token of staked Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain, um, which we've covered in depth multiple times on the channel, so you can go check that out. But what they're saying is that essentially the price of it is at 94% parity to actual price of Ethereum. And so that means that the retail investors confidence in Ethereum merge going smoothly is about 94%. The thing that this doesn't take into account, obviously, is going to be the fact that you can't unstake your Ethereum uh, post merge. And that will, I think, affect to a certain extent the uh, wrapped version of staked Ethereum. But crypto investors are eagerly awaiting the merge, the Ethereum blockchain's long-awaited technology upgrade. Most traders expect the event to go through smoothly, but the price of a popular Ether derivative known as STETH suggests a slim chance that some glitches or delays will arise, based on a new analysis by market research firm Enigma Securities. According to Enigma, the current price of STETH, a type of Ether derivative known as staked Ether, which is a token issued by Lido Protocol that users can trade freely even when their Ether is staked on the Ethereum blockchain, implies a nearly 6.25 to 6.5% probability the merge will become or will come with major bugs or delays. Enigma's pricing model treats STETH as a bond of one ETH as principal that yields a 4% return annually. So if the merge is successful, an investor who bought STETH gets 1.04 ETH in a year. That's some terrible returns. With STETH changing hands at 0.973, ETH at press time, the price implies only nine, a 93.5 to 93.75% chance of the merge going through smoothly and on time, Enigma estimates. This percentage is lower than what many market watchers are expecting because all the dress rehearsals went well. I mean, we did see, of course, really low participation on the Gourley network. And I think that saying it went well is a little overstated personally after everything I've seen with them. But, you know, what do you guys think in the comments in the live chat? 
The market has a high confidence in the merge. John Fryermuth, analyst at Enigma Securities, told Coindesk, but until that risk premium shrinks to match the staking yield, ST ETH prices or price supports the view that the merge is not priced in. Ethereum's transition to proof of stake consensus mechanism is set to fundamentally alter the blockchain of the second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. It will eliminate mining, reducing the network's energy consumption by about 99.95%, and of course, reducing the participation significantly as well because miners won't be participating anymore. Just saying. And at press time, the merge is scheduled to go live at some point in September. Quote, I am completely confident that will go well, end quote. Bed, ben Eddington, global product lead for institutional Ethereum staking service, Teku, at software firm Consensus, told Coindesk. Every testnet merge that we've done and every test scenario that we've run over the last six months has met these criteria for a successful merge. Merge hype has helped ETH uh, helped ETH, the blockchain's native token, to surge to $2,000 over the weekend from around $1,000 a month ago. Right now, different actors are betting on whether or not the merge happens as sentiment bet, uh, said Lex Sokolin, head economist at Consensus. If it does happen, that shifts us to a new regime. The discount on STETH to Ether also narrowed to around 3% from the lows of 7% in June when the token was caught in the middle of a liquidity crisis that led to the insolvency of crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital and crypto lender Celsius Network. The current STETH price shows incredibly low risk premium or premia that's packed with the merge execution risk, smart contract risks, and systemic risk, Enigma's Fryermuth said. According to Enigma, crypto traders are mostly discounting the impact of a potential fork of the Ethereum blockchain by proof-of-work miners, or that an airdropped ETH proof-of-work or ETHW token would have any significant value. The logic there is that STETH discount was narrowed, not increased, since the possibility of a fork began to swirl through the crypto industry discourse over the past couple weeks. Just because there's not going to be an ETH W doesn't mean that ST ETH is something that you should invest in. At least if I'm looking at it, not financial advice. Um, of course, I feel like if it's not, if I'm saying like, you know, don't buy anything, it's not fine. <laughs> it still kind of, uh, can come across as financial advice. So I don't, I don't know that ST ETH would be a great buy once again, because we go back to the fact that you will not have withdrawals enabled. And so you have a representation in STETH of staked Ethereum that won't be able to be withdrawn. So you basically don't own anything at the end of the day. I mean, that's pretty much it. Let's get into mining profitability right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Crypto.com. Crypto.com is my go-to centralized exchange for liquidating my crypto assets. With their Crypto.com Visa debit card, I can load up my mined Ethereum to pay for power and other operating costs. In addition to the Visa debit card, there are additional fiat options, including wire transfers to easily receive your profits. Crypto.com also offers additional services, including trading and even staking to earn additional revenue on your investments. Join 10 million plus users buying and selling 100 plus cryptocurrencies at true cost by using my affiliate link in the description for a $25 funding bonus or enter referral code SOAT at sign up for the same bonus. Remember, cryptocurrency investment comes with significant risks, so do your own research. All right, welcome back, everybody. So I am back on ETH right now for a little bit uh, because I am still working on some infrastructure stuff that need to get sorted. I'm not on it with all of my rigs. I have a couple rigs that I am currently uh, basically testing infrastructure with. Once again, that's just me trying to learn and grow and get to the point to where I'm sustainable. But for the past uh, day on ETH, uh, 4.5 giga hash, 4 or 5 giga hash with a 4.69 giga hash over the past 24 hours resulted in 
108 US dollars. That's not a full 24 hours, which is interesting. The expected earnings for the next 24 hours is 0.063 ETH, which would come out to 119.49. Now, my infrastructure is looking pretty good right now. We have the Ergo node basically down to uh, three milliseconds with a new proxy that is not throwing as many errors. I'm going to be testing it out over there. Over the weekend, while I was trying to move like the all the rigs over, which was like the in, uh, initial desire, I had some issues with the original uh, stratum that I was utilizing. And so I moved to a new stratum, but the new stratum was very uh, intensive on the uh, requirements. So I had to move that over. So I moved that over yesterday. And so I have the node running on a VM and I actually have a bare metal stratum running. And then I basically have the, the two rigs pointed at the bare metal stratum. It hasn't found the block yet. Over the weekend, we only found like one block um, of Ergo, which still is pretty good, but not obviously where we need to be at for profitability over the weekend. So we had a couple dead days um, as I was trying to get that worked out. Um, I think that once again, it's prepping uh, every single piece of your farm and everything that you can do to prep for, of course, what's coming in September is going to be advantageous. So taking a loss right now while testing and doing all of that uh, for me is okay, right? Like I'm, it's already in a sketchy position. We just need to make sure that we have figured it out by the time we get to those points and basically wake up every day and try to basically build something new that's going to give us some sort of advantage. And clearly node infrastructure is going to give you some sort of advantage at the end of the day, hopefully, especially if you can get enough small coins uh, up on those nodes and so on. But let's get into what to mine. We have the RTX 3090, and that is with the cre corrected Zell hash hash rate of 110 solutions a second, and the prog pals at 60 mega hash a second. With that, Ethereum is at 328 a day, and that is in revenue, and 251 a day after 10 cents a watt, uh, 10 cents a kilowatt hour power cost. You have Cero coming in, in second at three dollars and 25 cents a day in revenue and 246 a day after power. Neoxa at 304 a day in revenue and 225 a day after power. And Ravencoin at 304 a day in revenue and 225 a day after power. Firo at $2.90 a day in revenue and 216 a day after power. And Flux at 265 a day in revenue and $1.95 a day after power. Conflux at 264 a day in revenue and $1.85 after power. And Ethereum Classic 258 a day in revenue and $1.81 a day after power. Finally, we have Ergo at the bottom at 241 a day in revenue and $1.78 a day after power. Let's look at mining pool stats to get an idea of what's going on with hash rates. Bitcoin is still around that 232. Well, it's actually a little up by about four exa hash a second to 236 exa hash a second. Let's take a look at Ethereum, which is at 960 terahash a second. And of course, the 11% pump over the past seven days. Let's take a look at Ravencoin. Ravencoin's at 2.66 terahash a second and is up 1% over the past seven days. But it does have a significant increase in difficulty there as well going on, which is kind of something we're starting to see as these networks get tested out, right? So Flux, obviously uh, up about 60% in hash rate while only up about 53% in price. Uh, Flux is probably at its capacity right now without a more price discovery here soon. And you can see this spike in difficulty, but the spike in difficulty hasn't reached where it was at necessarily um, a few months ago. So there is that, but a significant increase in hash rate on the network, a significant increase in price over the past seven days. And this is kind of what we've seen, right? So if we look at Ethereum, once again, you have essentially that 11% pump in price hash rate pretty much staying stable. And then we're starting to see price discovery on these other proof of work coins. Not dissimilar from that, of course, is Ethereum Classic. Uh, but Ethereum Classic is an interesting case because Ethereum Classic is still sitting around that 32 to 34 terahash a second. Uh, but it's been sitting at that for a few weeks now. It's very, very stable. 
And this is good news, of course, for proof of work miners, especially on the ASIC side, because we're seeing extremely stable hash rates, but we also still got a 13% uh, boost in the price. Of course, you do see the corresponding uh, difficulty bump that happened sometime, I guess, once again, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this has been pretty stable for a while now. Now, let's take a look at Ergo and we can kind of show you guys a little bit of why that profitability is going down. We have a spike in the difficulty of the network. So obviously we had the spike in the hash rate and a corresponding price pump of 56%. So Ergo up about 60% over the past 77 days, as well as you have um, the price pump in flux, about that 60% as well. But you see a little pump in, of course, the difficulty here, and it's bringing that revenue down. So once again, though, we saw kind of some people drop off their hash rate uh, for this, like as a response of the spike in difficulty. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, I think, to find that hash rate to price ratio within Ergo um, just because they have a little bit of a different calculation that goes along with it. Now, for kind of fun, I do want to take a look at CASPA because CASPA is not something that comes up a lot. But the reason why this is important is because look at this difficulty spike that happened on August 11th. It's absolute insanity, but the price is following, right? So the price today is up once again by another 40% day over day or 60%, I think. Anyways, it's crazy. It's up 224%. And um, it might be able to handle more hash rate now at this point and it's something to keep an eye on. 14.7 tera hash on the network. This is just wild, but this is what you want to see. If you see a big spike here, you want to see this big spike as well, right? So that is pretty much how you'd like to see that working out. Now, another point that we should talk about is the hash rate and then the network hash rate, okay? So obviously on these small coins, you wanna be careful with um, a 51% attack, but what's really interesting here is Caspa's solo mining is extremely high. Like more than I've ever seen any other network. And you can see this, right? Because it's indicative right here. So the pool hash rates, which are recorded right here, only adds up to about 13.86 terahash. But the network hash rate is 40 terahash. If you looked at this chart right away, you'd be scared that there would be a 51% uh, attack possible. But there's not because this pool only has 11 terahash per second on it. Uh, only, that's still like really high. It's a little too central centralized on that. But the network hash rate is at 39.82 terahash a second, meaning basically there's about there, you know, there's way over double the amount of hash rate being solo mined, which is this is like this is like what Ergo wanted with their original white paper that for some reason Casp was just getting right off the bat. Extremely good documentation, right? the ability to essentially build the node and mine directly to it without needing a stratum, which is absolutely insane. Um, the, the stratum support from LOL miner now uh, means you can build your own node and basically have a stratum built directly into your Hive OS if you wanted to use some official miner or non-official miner like LOL miner. It's really, really good. So for a small network, I'm, I'm super impressed right now with the way it's working. Let's look at mining pool profitability on Ethereum. Past 90 days, ZET in first, Ether mine in second, F2 pool in third. Past 60 days, ZET in first, F2 pool in second, Crux pool in third. Past 30 days, ZET in first, Nano pool in second, F2 pool in third. Last 21 days, ZET in first, Nano pool in second, F2 pool in third. Last 14 days, ZET in first, Nano pool in second, F Flex pool in third. 
Last seven days, ZET in first, Flex Pool in second, Nano Pool in third. Last three days, Flex Pool in first, Nano Pool in second, F2 Pool in third. And for the last day, we have Crazy Pool in first for the first time in a while, Flex Pool in second, and Hive on Pool in third. ASIC Minor Profitability, if we pop on over to here. Da, 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 da. There we go. The Ant Miner E9 still right around that $67 a day. The L7's gone up about $5 a day. Just mining Doge, not even dual mining, which is pretty impressive. That does mean, of course, I did forget to point that out to you guys as well. Doge had a pump too today. Um, I don't know the exact reason, but Doge is up 10% for the day, and that is affecting the script miner's profitabilities. Uh, Ant Miner D7 comes in after that at $20.44 a day, which is actually beating out the KD6 at $17.74 a day and the KD5 at $11.06 a day. Scrolling down, we have the S19 Pro at $5.50 a day. So let's get into questions and answers. Remember, super chats are never required, always appreciated, first to be answered because they're the easiest to read. To help boost the algorithm of the channel, super stickers are apparently the number one way to go. So if you wanna help with boosting the algorithm, that's what I've been told. If you wanna support the channel directly where I get the most amount of money out of it, check out soundofatech.locals.com and that's the best way to directly support me. Now, if you want to just get a question answered, tag at Son of a Tech, which will highlight the message orange and make it easier for me to read and doesn't cost you anything. Let's get into it. I'll kind of scroll up and say, Wasted Trash Panda, thanks for the two super chat stickers uh, for $1.49, a banana and a hot dog. I don't know what you're hinting at, but I'm not sure that that is appropriate, good sir. Emo says, Ask Son of a Tech, do you know how will the pools handle ETH payouts? if we don't meet the minimum threshold for payment after the merge. Each one's probably going to handle it differently. You'll want to basically check out what they're going to say it is, but what I would assume is that they will end up having a final processing of all the payments at the end that will just pay out everybody that is has any remaining balances on the networks or on their pools. Chili Mining, what's going on, dude? Says, good morning. It's good to hear from you. I sent a couple messages to you. I need to get with you, good sir. Jorge says, at Simon Tech, can we still mine Caspa solo or do we get into a pool? I still think that mining Caspa solo is probably the way to go, but that's really going to be up to you. Um, let's figure out how we're going to get more pool distribution, I think. Uh, maybe I can help with that, and I'll, I'm going to be looking at that uh, this week uh, for sure. Miner Miner says, Ask Son of a Tech, much love from New York, your local crypto gang. Yeah, be careful, man. Be careful. The crypto mining gang, boys. The memes are on fire, says Gunmuse. So the memes are back. I did see that the memes were coming back. I think that was one of the top articles uh, going around right now. That is technically good news. That means that within the retail market, there's some confidence coming back into it. Uh, unfortunately, that always goes down that meme route, but you know, we'll take what we can get. Paul says Caspa node and stratum is easy enough. Yeah, Caspa, Caspa nodes probably the most well-documented and easy node to set up. <laughs> Which is, I mean, to be frank, is probably why we see this, right? This just goes, comes down to like, bro, documentation, documentation, documentation. For your project, if you want it to be successful, document the ever living crap out of it. And it's going to be a lot better uh, in the long run. That's just the way it goes, right? So, I mean, man, it's crazy. It's crazy how much that documentation has resulted in the most decentralization on a small coin that I've ever seen on launch. Nicholas Kane says, at Simon Attack with ETH being uh, five gigabytes, a majority of ASICs being six gigabytes, could they be in danger if proof of stake fails and the DAG increases more? Uh, I, the proof of stake, look, the thing is, is like, 
once it's moved, it's moved. I don't think you move back to proof of work. I don't think that's something that, like, I don't think they can just hit a rewind button on that. Now, East W will have that problem, right? And then you also say, also, if ETC made their DAG file 7 gigabytes, would that stop ASICs moving over? They want the ASICs to increase their security. And the big donation is probably going to influence that, which is something to pay attention to as well. Daniel Hall says, is it Beavis and Butthead more trying to solo mine Ethereum with 75 mega hash? I was mining ETC and minting 1.5 ETC a month. So I... Uh, brought 1.5 or bought 1.5 ETC since ETH is merging in a month. So they say, I don't know how to answer any of that, Daniel. It sounds like a lot of statements other than, is it, I think you're asking, is it cool to mine Ethereum, solo mine Ethereum with 75 mega ash a second? I mean, it's taking a chance. If you have really good latency to a solo mining pool or you build your own node, but you're going to waste a lot of time building your own node right now for something that's not even going to be relevant in a month. Nicholas Kane says, as I have a tech, I'm not sure that definitely makes sense. Just thinking out loud, which one? Yeah. Are your question or my answer? I don't know. That question confused me. <laughs> Miner Miner says, as I'm a tech, do you have a WTF is Caspa? Uh, no, I think I have a how to, well, no, I don't. I don't have any Caspa information. I do not have, I have their exchange listing, some stuff like that. I could do a WTF is though, if you would like one. JJ Doc says, "Ask Time Tech. I'm really enjoying your morning show. Had to tune in live for my hard to tune in live for yourself. Glad you're enjoying it, and thanks for being able to tune in today. Um, I try to do it at a time. Look, the way I got the time, to be completely frank, is uh, I used to work in IT, and it would always be that thing of like going to the coffee cooler, doing all that, and then sitting down, finding what I'm working on for the day, and then throwing up something on YouTube. So I was targeting the IT audience." specifically with the time Paul says, uh, or Paul, thanks for the $5 super chat says you got a green Casper backpack. My Casper backpack is loaded and locked and ready for the next bull run. That shit ain't getting touched, bro. Mm -mm. Staying right where it's at. <laughs> Make sure you tag at son of a tech so I can read the message. Take a sip from my BBT coffee cup. We got about five minutes for messages or questions. Yeah. I don't know why this broken pen's on my desk. Is what it is. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Uh. Gun Muse says, "As have a tech one and a half years, finally KYC in Binance US. <laughs> I can't because uh, they don't allow Texas. Village BC says, "As have a tech, are you running nodes on Raspberry Pis? No, that would be extremely inefficient. Um, virtual machine hosts, servers. Village BC says, "As have a tech, or do you run full server stuff? Yes. Run full server stacks. Building a new host uh, this week. Er Ted says, "At Simon Tech, I have a 3080-12 gigabyte. Is it worth dual mining ETH and Caspa? Give it a shot yourself and see how it works. You know, a couple things are going to be like power and so on. The thing is, like Caspa profitability is not on what to mine or anything right now either. So you do get that advantage." 
Uh, JJ Doc says, what's your take on the 6700 at this time? I don't really have an opinion on it. I guess it would depend on like price and hash rate. I think like 3000 series is probably a smarter move. Mine some 10. Thanks for the $1.99 super chat show. He's doing a reminder or uh, super chat. <laughs> he says, uh, hit that like and great show today. Thanks. And uh, just thanks for the like reminder. Uh, Patrick says, do you use any Q270 motherboards? Nope, I do not. Jesse says, ask Son of a Tech, do you think the merge is locked in for mid-September or will we delay? They already locked the total terminal difficulty, so it's locked in for September, yes. Mike Wright says, at Son of a Tech, what do you think of Kadena uh, and do you know if there's any guides for setting up, L uh, up LOL miners for your own node? Um, I'm working on, there is a guide on high, or on GitHub. I'll find it and try to go over it this week for you guys. And then as far as Kadena, no opinions on Kadena right now. Max Barbell says, at Sound of Tech, have you done pads or paste on 6600s? How do you find the pad size? I always use a, uh, just calipers. You can buy calipers off Amazon. I have a video called like how to replace pads on any GPU uh, with a link to like the calipers I use. Uh, and then I just measure the pads that are on there and then I uh, snag them off of Amazon. And then if I have, you know, multiple GPUs, I already know what I'm going to do with the next one. So I do keep a certain amount of pads in stock at this point, but you know, sometimes there's some outliers there as well. Uh, I have done it on the 6600s, but each 6600 is a little different. Diego says, "As time of tech, I don't understand why after the merge there is so much talk about ETC. Basically, where you're talking about ETH with di uh, with different. The, the only thing we know is ASICs will go there. Why not try another coin for GPU miners? Obviously, you want to try another coin, but." There is a significant point to the fact that there's going to be a ton of security on Ethereum Classic. And there's going to be a ton of ASICs. It means that from a price discovery standpoint that you will see some price discovery in Ethereum Classic. It's also the only top 100 coin that's in like that's going to take the transfer on. So... I mean, there's a huge case for Ethereum Classic just for, just because of those exact things, right? Detroit Iris says, "As time attack, keep uh, keep getting waiting to cool down on ETHCAS dual LOL miner with no overclock set advice." Um, well, you probably can't <laughs> mine it because you're getting it's getting too hot, which is the same problem I'm running into, right? Um, wait for the winter to dual mine, right? I like, or, you know, figure out cooling. It just means your cards are overheating. Diego says, ask Sam Tech. Don't understand why after uh, we already talked about that. Village BC says, ask Sam Tech. What do you use for your virtualization stack? Yeah, I'm on ESXi 7.0. And uh, if you're ever like interested, you can always head on over to twitch.tv slash blind run. I'm working in it a lot lately. SV Tech says, Ask Sama Tech, Casper recently in their Discord server uh, started the proposal of creating a funding pool for mobile wallet implementation. Yeah, that's good progression. Mobile wallets, I don't like, but you know, uh, more of stuff is never bad. If people want to use mobile wallets, then, you know, so be it. Daniel Hall says, Ask Sama Tech was trying to say, is 75 mega hash solo ETH on two miners too low of a hash rate? Uh, it's just, you're going to have a really long time to find and you may hit one early and you may not. It's basically just a chance game, you know, uh, worth it or not is up to you, right? More than likely you won't find anything, but there's always that chance. If you have a really good ping to two miners, you know, it could do it. All right, boys, I'm going to head to jujitsu. Be sure to hit the like, comment, subscribe, and notification bell down below. We'll be live on twitch.tv slash blindrun at 6 p.m. Central Time. I don't know what I'm going to be working on. 
I have a lot of stuff to do and I'm got I'm kind of getting nowhere with it it feels like at times <sighs> because I have a lot of videos I want to get done um, but I keep kind of hitting walls this evening though I think on Twitch I'm gonna work on uh, basically trying to figure out well you know what it's a surprise I don't think I want everybody on here to know what we're working on I'll see you next Tuesday.